How you doing today, guys? Uh, today we're going to be working on my Toro Dingo, and uh, this is another case of a machine that I'm just not using as often as I used to. Uh, so right now it is um, it's September of 17. So the last time I serviced it would be March of 16, with 570 hours. I don't know if you can read that or not. Uh, and right now in September of 17. It is, uh, the machine has, hopefully you can read that, uh, 584.3 hours. So I've run this machine, let's see, 570, 584, like 14 hours. So what happened was about a month, month and a half ago, I went to use the machine for something, you know, you just need the machine quickly turn it over and it wouldn't start, which led me to a conclusion. And I don't know, I think a lot of you guys that work with engines or small engines often uh, know where this is headed, but um, basically my, my assumption is is that the, the carburetor's all gummed up. Uh, I went and got some um, starting fluid. I, I took the air cleaner off, sprayed some starting fluid down, turned the key and the machine turned over, but it just wouldn't keep running. Uh, so my, my assumption is that, you know, because of the age of the machine, um, not because of the age of the machine, because of the new formulations of gas, gas goes bad quicker, and I know for a fact that I hadn't been putting stabilizer in my gas. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, but usually I only put stabilizer, stabilizer in the end of the season. Um, so whenever I use this in March, I don't think I would have been using it, which I, I will be doing now. Um, but, but basically the, the carb is gummed up. So my goal today is to uh, get the carb off, clean it out. I don't think I'm gonna be rebuilding the carb, but what I like to do is get the carb off, clean it out. And then I, you know, I did go to my power equipment dealer and ask them for advice on this one. And they said that uh, usually if the carb gums up, you know, the, the gas gums up where there's a little bit of gas. It usually doesn't gum up in the tank, although this gas is old enough that I may be screwed on that too. Um, but it usually goes bad uh, in the carburetor or the fuel lines because there's less gas. That was, that was what I was told. Uh, the moral of the story is, is, is with, with modern gasolines, just use the darn stabilizer because this is going to take me you know, probably most of the day to do um, because I'm filming. I've already researched it a lot. And it would have been a lot easier to just put some darn stabilizer in the gas. I know this is a Kohler Command 25. I don't see a model number on the engine, but uh, I did manage to find. Um, I did manage to find the directions. You know, I never showed you guys, but in my, you know, usually right down here in my garage, I have this box. It's a hanging file box. And what I did, you know, maybe 10 years ago is I. I just went ahead and put all my directions in these hanging file box. So it's, it's closed, it's sealed away from dust, and that way if I need the directions for something, I can just reach down here, grab them, and again, it's sealed, so there's not gonna be full of dust. Uh, you know, I keep any receipts or paperwork I need for registration, whatever, in my office, but uh, this is a nice little trick for anybody that's got a lot of stuff, because you know, you're in the garage working and you don't have to go back in the house to get it. So it's, uh, I guess it would have to be if, like a CH25 or 26 is, is would be my guess. But, um, you know, hopefully, oh, this is just the manual. Um, I may need to find the, uh, you know, went online, I may need to find find the actual engine or carb breakdown. I'm not sure this is going to have the engine or not. But um, Why don't we go ahead and, and get started? And uh, you know, I I haven't uh, I've never done this before on a on a I don't know. I, I rebuilt a five horse carb. I've done a couple chainsaw carbs, um, but there are some things when I was doing my research online. You got to be careful with. And there's one little pin in there 
that they say if you put it on backwards, it's a pin with two O-rings on it. If you put it on backwards, uh, your machine's not going to start. So we're, we're making this video for two reasons. Number one, in case anybody wants to, you know, enjoys watching me, you know, futz with these things. Um, but the other reason I'm making this video is just because I want to have a record of what I'm doing. So if I have any trouble putting it back together. Um, so why don't we go ahead and get started. So we just set the camera up over there and I'm just going to leave it in one place when I take it off and uh, almost try to pretend you guys aren't there and just enjoy uh, futzing with the dingo. Wow, that's tight. Trying to be very careful not to drop any screws down. Uh, you know, I'll put the choke on. Put the choke on, that way if a screw drops down there, it'll get caught. But I'm still gonna be very careful to try not to drop any screws down. And you see here, I have two different lengths of screws. So there were two screws up front that were shorter, and then it looks like the three screws over here are gonna be the longer ones. It's very easy to take things apart. The secret is to watch what you're doing while you're taking them apart so you can get it back together. So. All right, we got the three long screws, two short screws. I don't know what that thing would be called. Let's see, so this piece, this piece is on, there's a hole for the hose, so it's kind of obvious which way it goes. And then, looks like this hose goes all the way through that. Is that possible? So that hose goes through. And there is the carb. There is evidence of mice in this machine. Uh, they had, it's funny, I, I had some styrofoam in here when I took it off about a month ago. And uh, over in this part, over in this part back here. And literally the day before, I had some styrofoam I put in my trash in the garage, and the next day, I found some in the, uh, in the garbage. And I thought this was a piece of cardboard. Uh, this is actually a potato chip. So I don't know how they did it, but they seem to have managed to get a potato chip uh, into my machine. This seems like a, just a great place for the mice to build a nest. There's a linkage over here that I think is attached to the carb. There's a linkage over here. And then there's a linkage down below. And I've seen a lot of videos where there's a solenoid on these things too.
So I went ahead and, and just put a giant fan. It's like an 8,000 CFM fan. It's, uh, it's from Tractor Supply. Uh, and I've got that blowing out the garage right next to me just so that any of this dust or any of these fumes just go out of the garage. Uh, I just don't want to be, be breathing this stuff in. I open the door at the back of the garage uh, just to create some nice cross ventilation. So uh, it looks like there's a ground, there's a ground down here. We've got the fuel line in front here we got to take off. There's a wire here that I think just slides, I think it is the ground wire. It should just slide out of here. I don't know about that. Oh, does this click? Okay, so this wire stays where it is. And there's just a hook for this. This is the solenoid I've seen in some videos. And then we, uh, we would undo these two bolts. Which are the same size as the ones on top. Okay, so these bolts are, they're not black and they're actually longer than the other two bolts. And then this one back here has a ground on it. So the one with the ground also has a washer on top and I just have to be real careful to remember to put that ground back on. We'll go ahead and take the fuel line off and it's gonna start to stink now. Wow, that is tight fuel line, holy cow. It's worn, I might have to get a new piece, it's a little worn there. Might be easier to take the fuel line off. Wow, that is just tight fuel line. Holy cow. You know what I should do before I take the fuel line off is open the fuel tank so there's no pressure in there. Hopefully by opening that tank it won't just come squirting out at me. Okay. One thing I want to do is really focus on these linkages. Because that, to me, is the hardest part, is to make sure I get them back on the right way. But I'd like to get this fuel line off first. Because that's just going to add a whole bunch of awkwardness. So hopefully I got the camera zoomed right in on the linkages. And we've got one up here, and we've got one down here. And then there's one, uh, one spring here. The videos I've seen, they usually just take these pliers, and they just kind of pull this spring. and it comes out. And then we've got two linkages. Now both of the linkages, they kinda go, they kinda go, you know, the linkage comes, takes a left turn into the hole, and then straightens out. I think that's a Z, is that a Z bend? So it looks like if I just pick up the carb and rotate it, 
both of these linkages are going to come out. Now this top linkage actually has, it's the darker one, but it's got a, it's got a crook before it hooks in, and the bottom one just comes in and just, it's straight, it's a straight shot. So hopefully, I'm just gonna pick it up and rotate There's the bottom, which the bottom one goes, there's a piece of plastic in there, it goes through the plastic, the little grommet thingy. And then the top one, it's got a couple more bends on it. But that should do it. I had the choke on when I was doing this, and I kind of wonder if it would make a difference if I did or I didn't have the choke on. So the choke, this top one is the choke. You see how that's moving? So now I've got the choke off. We'll see if that makes a difference. And I am gonna get a vacuum and, and vacuum all this out down here. Hey guys, so in other videos I've done this work at my workbench in the back of the garage, but I figure rather than, you know, inhaling uh, carbon choke cleaner and, you know, I'm sure it's safer than it used to be, but I, I just, I don't like dust, I don't like chemicals. So um, I'm setting up in front of my garage, got a couple sawhorses with some plywood here, I've got my 8000 CFM fan running there, got the back door to the garage open. So I'm trying to create a nice wind flow through the garage that'll just bring all the, um, the, the solvents, the, the fumes, and any dust just away from me. Um, if I start smelling them, I may put my respirator on just because I, I just, I don't want to breathe this junk in. The other thing is, you know, with that fan and my microphone, this audio may be absolutely horrible. And uh, I don't really know what to say, I just, uh, I'll just do my best, and if the auto is no good, you're welcome to watch another video. But um, the first thing we should do is see if we can get this hose off. Spritz the carb, clean that off a little bit. Disgusting. Maybe we'll start taking off the solenoid here. Let's see if there's anything in there to clean off. out the bottom so I guess that's a good thing spritz over here a little bit just to clean that dirt off it's a little nicer So I guess we should take these four off on top and uh, see what's going on. This would be the float in there. And these screws 
screws are on there. What I'm doing is I'm resting this on the edge of the plywood. The only part that's not flat is right here. So I'm resting it on the edge of the plywood and kind of leaning down on it. Come on. As I turn, and that's giving me, you gotta kind of put downward pressure and turn. See, I got this piece of wood so I can keep this, this off the ground. put some pressure as I'm loosening. That one's loose, loose. We got one more to go over here. There it is. Guys, it really doesn't look that bad. I thought there'd be a lot more junk in there. It does smell kind of funky. This is the one you gotta be careful when you put it back, that you don't, uh, you don't put it back backwards. But let me just spritz this a little bit. Coming out there. When I spritz this hole, see that it's coming out, it's coming out right down below. Okay guys, I lost audio for a few clips in here, so we're just gonna go ahead and use a voiceover. To, uh, to get the point across. And I just wanted to show you, that's me taking out that little piece that I was talking about. And then there I am trying to show you that the, the pointy end, that end right there, is the end you're supposed to be putting in the hole first. To clean the small holes there, I used a piece of, uh, that's actually from a trailer, some trailer wire I had. And I just put that in the hole and sloshed it around. And I want to say I did read a manual by Kohler online, and they, they said not to use wire to clean those passages. So do so at your own risk. I put the piece in some carb cleaner for a while, and I should have removed the O-rings before I did this so I didn't distort them. Uh, and then here I am just showing you, you know, you can use different size pieces of wire to clean those passages. So that time I made sure to take the O-rings off before I soaked the piece. Everything seems to be flowing okay where that little piece goes. And it just always amazes me when I, when I clean carbs. You just never know where the stuff is going to come out. It's, it's uh, almost a surprise every time you press the, the button on the spray can there. This shot is just what was in my pan, and, and all that white stuff is the bad gas that I've been cleaning out. I'm not sure this piece is supposed to flow through or not. So, um... Let's just try it one more time. The little holes are good. I just don't know if that goes through or not. So we're going to assume it doesn't. Here I am just going ahead and putting those O-rings back on. And I will say that later in the video, when I put that piece back in, you know, those O-rings get distorted pretty easily. So, you know, I'd almost recommend just getting a new set of O-rings if you're planning on taking this apart. And then there I am again, 
uh, showing you that you got to put the smaller, the smaller end of that piece goes down that hole first. Uh, because I have both my dealer and online, I've read that if you don't put that small end down first, the machine's not going to run or run well. I'm not sure which, but don't make that mistake. Hey guys, I just realized that my audio has been missing for most of this video. So uh, all I can do is tell you that I did plug in my microphone and uh, I'll just make sure before I start filming that it's going and hopefully it won't cut out again. But uh, hopefully I did some voiceovers to make everything work out okay. Uh, what, I was, what I was doing there was trying to get the float out because there's a big needle underneath that I'm supposed to be uh, supposed to be cleaning. The big needle looks fine. So the only thing that holds that on is this little piece of wire. So I'll just spritz the tip a little bit. Just make sure the uh, the hole here is clear as well. So hopefully you see that uh, that cleaner coming out there. This hole here just goes straight through. This one goes straight through too. One over here. This one's coming back at me. Gosh darn it, right in the face. That's why we wear safety glasses, folks. All right, I'm gonna bust out the magnifying safety glasses and see if that helps to see this little hole. There is a ridiculously tiny little hole in there, which I can't figure out where it goes, but wherever that ridiculously tiny little hole goes, it's not bringing much fuel, that's for sure. These two other holes are much, much bigger. This one is like the hole width. This one is smaller. So we're just gonna very gently so the stuff doesn't come back at us, flush this hole out. And call her done. Hopefully wherever that goes isn't gonna, you know, end the world if I didn't clean it 100%. I'm just gonna swap out this sturdy mat. A nice clean one. Okay, so this goes in there. Or does it go this way? Okay, I'm gonna pause the video and go watch why I took this out. I think this piece goes on this way. Does that just make sense? But we are going to uh, go to the video and find out for sure. And I could clearly see these notches when I was taking it off. So all I need to do is hang this piece, make sure it falls in the hole. this screw in. And 
and then tighten them down good because they were definitely tightened down really good without stripping them. Now the only thing about this is there's a little uh, piece of wire here and I don't know if it makes a difference the way you put that pin back. I mean as long as when the float when the float sinks down it lets more fuel in. I don't think it really matters, right? And then this must be this tube down here must be where the, the carb actually picks the fuel up. So this down here is just like a holding tank for fuel, and then the carb picks the fuel up here. So I've got this, uh, this thing in uh, as tight as I want to push it. Make sure you got this pin back in the right way. I know I, the audio wasn't good on that, but there's like a pointy side and there's a flat side. The flat side sticks up. And then we put this back on top. And it looks like we kind of, as we're pushing down, that little piece that was sticking up kind of got shoved down. So now we can put our screws back on. Pretty sure the directions would say to tighten these screws down in a crisscross pattern. And then we'll see if we can put them on uh, tight, but not stripping them. So I feel like if I go any more, I'm just going to start hollowing out these screws. So we're going to stop there. While we're over here, I just want to show you there's some numbers. Uh, I'm assuming this is the model number of the, of the carburetor. And it says 24053. There's a 77 and then it says KE. HN, Ken. I don't know what that means. But uh, I assume if you need a rebuild kit, you would want to bring these numbers. Or once you get it off, just bring the whole darn carb. Better safe than sorry. And I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I just want to call my dealer and uh, ask him what I should do about uh, about the fuel that's in there. If after a year I should drain it all out or just run it through the machine. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and uh, start working on getting this guy back on. And I think the first thing we should do is, is work on these linkages. So I'm gonna hold the carburetor like this which will allow me to line up the top linkage. And if I can reach it, the bottom linkage. And then I need to roll it around. And hopefully our holes are gonna line up. And we should probably hook up this spring while we're here. And I guess there were only two screws holding this whole mess on. 
that wasn't good. I grabbed um, one of the bolts that hold it on and I saw that washer just go down and I'm not sure that washer's coming back. Which I guess the good news is, is I didn't lose it in the carburetor. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's down there. God, that's not good. So I'm gonna just have to, um, I'm just gonna have to hope that whatever moving parts there are, are inside the motor. Nope, that's moving. That's like a big flywheel type thing. There's a washer in there that's about the size that would go on that. And all I can do is pray that that washer's not gonna screw anything up. But I don't see how I would get in there to get that out. God, that's embarrassing. I just keep hoping for a miracle that I see it popping out of there somewhere. So when you're putting this back together, make sure you check your bolts that you don't have the one with the washer on it and you lose the damn washer down there. Idiot. Okay, let's see if we can do this without losing the washer. Let's just put the choke on so we don't drop anything down there like washers. Go ahead and snug these down. Okay, we'll connect the solenoid. This wire looks like it wants to be underneath there, this green wire. There's your throttle moving. Choke. Throttle. Not getting much of a response out of the throttle. Seems like it's binding. Really sure why. Choke is moving nice. All right, we're gonna have to pause the video and figure this one out. I went back and looked at the video of when I took everything apart and this um, this throttle wasn't really touching the end back then anyways and I mean I don't see anything I could have done differently for what I was doing in here so I'm gonna have to say that that's the way it was and worst case you know hopefully I clean the carb out enough that it, if it'll start 
And if it doesn't work, it'll limp, and I can take it to somebody who, who you know, can, can fix it for me. But I, I have to say that I believe that this is connected the proper way, that maybe there's some kind of a um, governor, or like a vein or something, that senses the flywheel speed. I don't know. So that maybe this piece isn't quite as, um, this lower linkage isn't really supposed to move that much. I mean, it definitely, if I, if I move, so that's the choke, the throttle. And you know, there's a piece on the other side that moves a little bit near the end. But, um, you know, I don't know what to say. Hopefully that'll make sense. There's a plate inside there that's not, it's not really moving a ton. Throttle's all the way up, the plate is straight up. Throttle's on idle, that plate is, uh, I'm gonna say a little more than halfway closed or it's open a little more than halfway. And then if I touch this thing, touch this bottom one or move it. You know, if I move it back this way, yeah, the plate closes, but it doesn't really seem to want to go much, much beyond, so I guess, uh, yeah, it only wants to close like a little more. It, it stays open a little more than halfway to lower the throttle plate thingy. So we'll, uh, we'll just go with that. Call that another reason I don't do this professionally. So we got the solenoid hooked up. We got the two throttles hooked up. We've double checked, triple checked them. They're uh, definitely on. They're on the same way they came off. We dropped a washer down there. We hooked up the ground. Uh, before I put this back on, I'm gonna go ahead and clean that off. Get all that cook out of there. I've got the piece that goes here soaking in some simple green, so we'll go ahead and put this put this tube on while we're letting that soak. That should be good. So there's our plate all cleaned up. And uh, I bet you the mice don't even send me a thank you for that. So uh, we got the fuel line in place. So I just gotta work this fuel or breather thingamajigger. Maybe it's a vent of some sort. I don't know, crankcase vent. Let me know if you know what this thing is. And uh, just work that through. There we go. So now I'm definitely going to put the choke on so I don't drop a screw down. And then we can. Uh, there's three screws. Hopefully I got this right. Oh, you know what? So we gotta put this piece back on with the hole over here. And then we do the three screws. That was too tight. You should always keep your screws loose when you're uh, first putting them on so you have some wiggle room. I should probably just go ahead and put these other ones on too. Ok, 
Okay, that's good. I didn't tune this guy up yet, so I've got a nice new air filter. I just put a little bit of oil on the pre-cleaner, and then I just kind of mix it all around. If there's a better way to do this, let me know. I don't know, I always feel like this doesn't... All this does is catch the dirt, which I guess is the idea. But I've never quite figured out the way to do this right. And then we just... I'll take this off and tuck it in. So there's that. The old filter really wasn't that bad if you take a look. I mean, I probably could have just done a pre-cleaner or just cleaned the old one, it would have been fine. And then this cover is not so bad, so uh, I'll just give it a quick wipe and throw it back on. And the secret to this is you kind of go in first, and then you come back. And luckily I've got this to kind of remind me which way it goes, because one side is deeper. Okay guys, we got the uh, carb cleaned out. We cleaned out around the carb so the mice have a nice, fresh, clean start to build their nests, store their food. And uh, unfortunately, I don't want to go ahead and, and try this until I drain the fuel tank. And draining the fuel tank is going to be a whole nother video. Um, so I might, I don't know, I might film that video, I might not, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But uh, what I want to do is get all the old gas, the crappy gas, out of the tank. So when I go to start this guy, it's got fresh gas. There might be uh, just a Scotia gas left in the fuel line. I will change the fuel filter before I start this machine as well. Uh, so I can clean that out uh, too. But um, I'm not sure if I'm going to make this a two-part video or... Uh, if I'll just come back after we clean the fuel tank and turn the key and see what happens. But um, for right now, uh, thanks for watching and have a great day. And we'll see you either in the next video or in the next scene. Thanks, guys.